Good morning, everyone. Today we are going to uh, see one case in which this old lady, around 70 years old, otherwise medically fit, required some extractions to be done in the aesthetic zone of slightly mobile teeth and then immediate implants and immediate provisionals to be done. Uh, as you can see, the lip line is very conducive to a good uh, result in the aesthetic zone because the patient does not display the gingival tissues in her uh, smile. So we can easily uh, plan for a simple procedure of image placements and image provisionals and then go ahead with our uh, planning for uh, making an image provisional restoration. As you can see, the retracted view here uh, shows the uh, incisors having a lot of recession along with the canines. Uh, but overall the teeth are uh, not in a bad condition because there is a lot of absence of uh, local irritating factors. So this is age related recession apart from some neglect, some trauma from occlusion and the 2-2 has become extremely mobile. Uh, so here our plan will be to first look at the scans and uh, when we look at the scans uh, we need to analyze the data in the region of 1-1 there is hardly any uh, buccal bone uh, so implant placement in that zone uh, will be uh, ruled out in the region of one two uh, it's a healed site and we have abundant bone width and height and the region of two one uh, there is a good socket tooth is grade one mobile and we will extract it and place an implant in that zone and so our plan here will be to place two implants and have two pontics uh, the reason why we are doing these two sites implants is because they are the best and most conducive to implant placement. We do not desire to place four implants in these four areas where the missing teeth will be there. So the best outcome is when you have only two implants. So these two implants could be in lateral incisors region with central incisors being a pontic or they could be in central incisor region with lateral incisor being a pontic. We are choosing one lateral that is first quadrant one two and we are choosing one central that is the second quadrant to one for our implant uh, placement. The placements will be done after extraction immediately and we will also look at making an immediate provisional. So I've taken a pre-op impression and taken done a wax up for the entire zone. After we scrub and anesthetize the patient, we'll gently elevate the teeth and uh, remove the very mobile 2-2 two -two, uh, in, in a jiffy. And then the 2-1 is uh, loosened up and that also comes out uh, without any uh, adverse event. Now at this point, it's very important to note that after the extraction is done, you take a curate and mechanically debride the socket well. You could also use betadine to chemically clean the socket or you could use uh, any photodynamic therapy like elbow to disinfect the socket. In this case, mechanical disinfection was enough. Uh, the lesion was not so big. But now what I'm doing is I'm taking the pilot drill and walking along the labial bone from the inside to judge its integrity. I don't want any dehiscence or fenestration to be there. And so once I've verified that, now I'm happy that the labial bone is intact after the extraction. And we'll direct this pilot drill towards the palatal shelf in such a way that our implant will be placed in the palatal zone with no contact of any drill or implant of the labial uh, area at all. So we go ahead with our uh, placement the pilot drill and once you've got the uh, purchase into the palatal bone keeping your thrust towards the parallel side we use the pilot drill now with a depth stopper of 14 mm where an implant is going to be of 12 mm this is going to be a copa sky implant so there comes our next drill uh, the penultimate drill which goes at around 350 rpm with a 14 mm stopper uh, gradually and then enlarging the osteotomy site in the palatal shelf and whatever bone you collect on these drills you will keep that safely to put it back in the socket that's our final drill which goes to the full depth of 14 mm from the free gingival margin and i like to put back the final drill sometimes and feel the tuck back so that i know that my osteotomy has enough resistance in it to secure the implant in its correct position we then pick up the implant on the implant driver. That's a Copa Sky 4 by 12 mm implant. And uh, this will be uh, placed with a good uh, force towards the palatal thrust so that the implant inadvertently does not come out to be placed more labially than what we need. 
Now here I had a choice of extracting the central also, the one one, but I didn't do that because I used it as a guide for me to place the implant in the adjacent sides so that I can try to come as close to the incisor ledge with the screw access as possible. With the preoperative scan, I knew that it's not possible to place an implant such that the screw access hole will come from the lingual fossa because in that case I would have created a perforation on the label side while trying to place the implant in that trajectory. So I follow the trajectory of the existing bone to keep things simple for this 70 year old lady. We then go ahead and get the stability in the implant of upwards of 30 Newton centimeter. And uh, using a hand driver place the implant depth a little more so that we are around uh, three millimeters below the CEG of the adjacent teeth. That is the prosthetic space I require. Now here I'm going to end up with the FP2 type of a prosthesis. And so uh, we have not raised any flap. We don't want to put any pink ceramics here uh, at a later date by causing any loss of tissue. Once this is done, I take a papilla preserving incision on the 1-2 region and then take a full thickness flap to elevate the area such that we are able to see the entire good width of the bone topography that we observed in the pre-op scan. Take the releasing incision as far up as you require so that your visibility of the site is adequate for you to center the pilot drill correctly. I take an explorer and walk through the incision to see that there are no tags of tissue attached to the bone. We then take sharp periosteal elevators and gently elevate the flap to allow reflection of the bone. The 1-1 one -one is very mobile but it's still going to act as a guide for me uh, so we have kept it in place. Once you achieve the uh, full thickness reflection, we will then take a pre-pilot drill and mark the center of the ridge more towards the palatal to go along the trajectory of the available bone to mark an entry point for the main drill, which in this case is a 12 mm stopper, a pilot drill. My implant is going to be 10 mm long and I go ahead and finish the osteotomy up to 12 mm and then the next drill comes at a slightly slower speed of around 350 rpm with copious amount of saline irrigation maintaining the trajectory and your pressure on the handpiece to not come out too labelly and then the implant is positioned in its desired place keeping the thrust on the handpiece towards the palatal. The implant is then placed to its correct depth and that again will be around 3 millimeters below the CEG of the adjacent tooth. So once the implant is placed, we may need to torque it with the hand to go a little bit more deeper. And once these two implants placements have been accomplished, the one one is easily extracted and its socket nicely curated and debrided to allow us to get the pontic side prepared well. Before I suture, I'm going to uh, go ahead with the attachment of the temporary cylinders on this, onto which I'll make a screw retain provisional restoration. So I'm packing the cylinders with Teflon tape. I already have a putty index from the preoperative wax up and I use protein fold to uh, load it in the index and place it on the this area. Once that is done, the setting is complete. We remove the protemp and now we can see that there is a little void. So we can patch that up with some flowable composite. And we can also see the Teflon for the screw access, which is coming as intended from the incisal one third of the proposed four unit bridge. Once you have patched up the resin, if there are any cracks visible anywhere on the parallel side, we are going to reinforce that area with a little bit more flowable. And then uh, take an air order and make a small uh, purchase onto the label side to gain access to the Teflon tape, which is now easily visible.
Once the Teflon tape is removed, you take your hex drivers and unscrew the four unit provisional restoration from the underlying implants. Enlarge the holes a little bit if required and then unscrew the provisionals. And at this point, uh, we need to see that our provisional template is ready, but the emergence is not ready. And so from the color of the template cylinders, we'll have to create a gradual emergence mimicking the shape of a central incisor as it, as it emerges from the socket as well as a lateral incisor. So flowable composite is going to be utilized to get that shape and then we'll use burrs like uh, carbide burrs and soft legs to finish and get the shape as we desire. So here is the uh, shaping now done with flowable resin and uh, once you are verified that this sh shape and emergence is correct, you can uh, use your polishing burst to polish get a high luster on this provision then you put it in deep retarding for a few minutes and then screw it onto place so here we can see clearly that we manage this area very well uh, with a flapless placement in 2-1 region uh, pontic sites were kept flapless and a small flap was raised only on the 1-2 region to allow us to get the uh, implant placed in the heel side and then a storage and restoration fabricated so that this can be delivered to the patient at the same day as the surgery. Now it's important to see that this provisional restoration is totally out of occlusion in uh, centric relation is as such in MIP rather and even when the patient is protruding and goes on right and left lateral excursions the provisional should not have any marks of the articulating paper. So I hope uh, this uh, presentation was of use to you. Uh, please sh do share it with your colleagues and ask them to subscribe. We'll be coming with a large number of topics in the near future where you can look at these uh, small uh, voiceovers on videos and still photos to understand case planning, surgical execution, as well as the prosthetic workflow for implant as well as natural dentition. Thank you.